from some very real space threats all the way to some unsettling things found on Google Imaging. Here are the top 10 unsettling things discovered by space satellites. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the wandering black hole. If you keep up with space news, you'll know that lately, and rightfully so, it's been flooded with news of the James Webb Telescope as it unfurls and reaches its destination at L2. But while this is exciting and very promising, we have to take some time to remember our roots. The James Webb was preceded by the infamous Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble walked so James Webb could run. Since its launch into low Earth orbit in the 1990s, this space telescope has been delivering us amazing space discoveries, and this one is a bit of a frightening one. Back in 2017, the Hubble located a black hole, which is already frightening, but this one was peculiar. That is because they found that this one was basically being pulled or manipulated by gravitational waves. Basically what this means is that at some point this black hole is going to escape its own galaxy and begin roaming into the universe. Black holes are bad enough, I don't want them to start wandering around. The good news, however, is that despite this black hole weighing approximately the same as 1 billion suns, as it flies through space at 5 million miles per hour, it's estimated to be about 8 billion light years away from Earth, so we're pretty safe at this point. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Trementina Base. This is a location that was, of course, discovered using satellite imaging, and you might be wondering what this base holds that makes it so unsettling. Well, that is because this is the location that belongs to the Scientology-affiliated Church of Spiritual Technology. If you are unfamiliar, Scientology is a set of beliefs and practices that were invented by L. Ron Hubbard, and it has been variously defined as a cult. The core belief of this group is that humans are immortal and that our bodies are a essentially just a shell to house us. There's also some alien stuff in there I'm not quite so sure about. This group is quite controversial, not only for the beliefs of the group, but because of their illegal activities that also occur like fraud or spying on the government. There have been numerous superior court judgments which have not only called this group a dangerous cult, but also a manipulative profit-making business as well. So this base is said to belong to the Church of Spiritual Technology, and they are said to be an entity that was formed to to manage the copyright affairs of the Church of Scientology. This base is supposed to provide storage space for an archiving project, which is meant to preserve founder L. Ron Hubbard's writings, films, and recordings for future generations, which is definitely a terrifying thought. It is said that these texts have been engraved on stainless steel tablets that are encased in titanium capsules and held underground. Maybe a little overzealous, if you ask me. In our number eight spot today, we have Stereo A. The soul Solar Terrestrial Relations Observatory, or STEREO for short, is a solar observation mission that was first launched in 2006. The mission saw the launch of two spacecrafts, STEREO A and B, and they were sent into orbit around the sun. This has caused the spacecraft to pull ahead of and fall behind the Earth, which has given them the opportunity to use their stereoscopic capabilities to get imaging of the sun, as well as phenomena such as coronal mass ejection, which is exactly what we are here to talk about today. In July of 2012, there was a CME, often referred to as a sort of solar superstorm, that tore through Earth's orbit, but luckily, Earth wasn't there. The same couldn't be said, however, for the Stereo A spacecraft as this storm and the craft collided. If this event had occurred just one week prior to when it did, Earth would have been right in the midst of it, however, so we were pretty narrowly missed. The Stereo A spacecraft has been able to remain operational despite this hot and Counter. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Lost City. In 2011, archaeologist Sarah Parkak used high resolution and NASA satellites in order to look for subtle differences on the surface of the Earth, and she used this in order to pinpoint the locations of buried ancient pyramids, towns, and ancient tombs in Egypt. This would allow her and her team to find these spots from thousands of miles away so that they could then go and excavate them. While this method led to many amazing discoveries, perhaps the most notable of all is the discovery of a 3,000-year-old Egyptian city. She and her team had found the lost ancient city of Tanis, which lies about two hours northeast of Cairo. Through this satellite imaging, she was able to find networks of streets and such that are completely invisible from the ground. The imaging also shows that the city is filled with underground tombs as well. Sir explains why she enjoys what she does so much, saying, quote, What's incredible about archaeology is literally every day archaeologists are making headlines by making the most incredible discoveries. 
Well, Sarah, this is certainly one of them. In our number six spot today, we have whales. There are quite a few satellites that orbit our Earth, and there has been for years, but as time goes on, we find new ways to use the information that they give us. According to an article written on January 20th of this year, there is a new study that is showing how, as satellite imagery improves, it is being used to accurately identify whales that have been stranded on beaches. The article goes on to explain why this is important, saying, quote, For as long as humans have been monitoring the ocean, the only way we've known about stranded whales was to stumble upon them ourselves. But knowing about stranded whales, including where and when they strand and how many are ashore, is vitally important. Largely due to human causes, such as ship strikes, pollution, and entanglement in fishing gear, whale strandings are on the rise. Their occurrence can often signal that something is amiss and hint at a larger ecosystem problem, such as a harmful algal bloom, yet the ground-based networks used to monitor stranded whales are biased towards wealthy, highly populated regions. It is very true that despite their enormous size, many of these creatures that wash up on remote coastlines or in resource-limited nations or in countries experiencing conflict end up going completely unnoticed. In our number 5 spot today, we have the SS Yasim Wreck. The SS Yasim was a Bolivian cargo ship that sank on the evening of December 1st, 2003. For a while, no one was quite sure as to why it sank, as well as the fact that no one could find the wreck. This is exactly why it was so surprising when, a few years ago, the Google Maps team located the sunken vessel based on their satellite imaging. The ship was found on its side, perhaps in the same location it initially sank, in Wingate Reef, just off of the coast of Sudan. This wreck then became one of the largest visible on Google Earth until quite recently. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Lake of Blood. This is another find that came as someone was scrolling along and looking at all there is to see on Google Maps all the way back in 2007. This is when they noticed a blood red lake that sat just outside of Sadr City in Iraq. Many people began to speculate what this could be about, including a ton of macabre ideas. There was even a rumor going around that said a local slaughterhouse in the area would sometimes dump their blood into canals, but this seems a little unnecessary and very unlikely. There hasn't yet been an official explanation for what exactly made the water so red, but it's most likely that the red color is due to sewage, pollution, or possibly some sort of water treatment process. I can understand why the startling image would get people's imaginations going, but it is likely a pretty reasonable explanation. In our number 3 spot today, we have the Gobi Desert Structure. This is one discovery that had conspiracy theorists mind Mine's absolutely swirling. About a decade ago, someone was searching through some Google Maps images when they found a mysterious array of structures and patterns that appeared to be etched into the surface of the Gobi Desert, which is located in China. The structures are reminiscent of geoglyphs, but are seemingly much more modern and newly created. The speculations of what this structure could be or why it was created went wild, with people saying that they were street maps of American cities or messages either to or from some sort of extraterrestrials, the list of bizarre theories just goes on. While this is still sort of conspiracy sounding, this is likely the most reasonable explanation for what these structures are, and that is that these structures are used to help calibrate China's spy and radar satellites. To be fair, this does make a lot of sense, and I don't have any other ideas for what it could possibly be. In our number 2 spot today, we have Leo 1. So, we live on Earth, which is one of the planets in our solar system, and our solar system sits in a galaxy that we call the Milky Way. There are other galaxies out there that are potentially similar to ours, but there are also things called satellite galaxies. So you know how our solar system is a solar system because we are bound to and orbiting around our sun? Well, basically, these satellite galaxies are like that, but with bigger galaxies. Like, they orbit around our galaxy. It's a whole thing about gravity and all of that science-y stuff, but in the end, here in the Milky Way, we have about 50 satellite galaxies that orbit us, and the particular one I want to talk about right now is called LEO-1. We started investigating this specific one because of the fact that researchers realized that it doesn't contain a lot of dark matter. While studying this galaxy, it was found that although it is small, it has a massive black hole at the center of it. Like, it's so big in comparison to the galaxy itself that this black hole is almost as big as the one we have here in the Milky Way, which is unprecedented data. 
This discovery could lead scientists to redefining what their understanding is of how all galaxies formed. The galaxies are the building blocks of the universe, so this would be immensely interesting and important information, and it could change a lot of what we once believed. In our number one spot today, we have The Missing Hiker. This one is a little different from the others on today's list, but it's a super interesting story that involves using satellites, and I had to share it with you. A man by the name of Ben Kuo has a hobby where he enjoys looking at different satellite imagery in order to look at all places all over the world. He has said, quote, you can look and see what's going on in the world no matter where it is. It's kind of fascinating what you can see. He then went on to describe how it's kind of trivial, but he loves it, and in this case, it was more useful than trivial. The case he is referring to took place in April of 2021, when a hiker named Rene Compion got lost in the Angeles National Forest. While lost with little reception and low battery on his phone, Rene was able to send one photo to his roommate, which he sent in hopes to give a clue about his location. The photo showed his legs with a sort of canyon below, and while I look at the photo and go, okay, he's somewhere that has rocks, I guess, people like Ben see this as a stellar clue. Ben said, quote, actually, I looked at the picture and I said, I bet I can find where this guy is. Ben used his own knowledge of hiking trails in the area as well as sites like Google Earth and EO Browser in order to zero in on where the missing hiker could be. It took Ben about 20 to 30 minutes to find what he thought was the location of the missing person and he passed along the info to the search and rescue team. In the end, when the sheriff's department went out to investigate, they found the missing man less than a mile from where Ben suggested he might be. Once found and informed of how they located him, Renee said, quote, I was like, wow, I didn't realize somebody had a hobby doing stuff like that. I owe him my life and everybody else that was involved in helping. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.